Okay, can everybody hear me? And can you see the slide? You should see a slide that's a picture of New York with the background. Everybody got it? You can't? I can try it one more time. Hold on. Got it now? Again, to type, you have to go down and pick my name. See it? Okay, we lost somebody. Hopefully they'll come back. All right, so we're starting a little bit late here today. That's fine. I pre-planned to talk about just some general things today. Um, and then we can bring up some charts here when we're done with the things that I prepared in the PowerPoint. But you can see it? Okay, great. If people come in late, I'll let them in as well. So for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I've been trading for almost 15 years. So this will be 15 years, 2023, I've been trading. It seems like a long time. Um, and it's funny, I was just having a conversation with somebody about this earlier today. I don't think I've ever lived through a recession. So I think we're at, I think we're in a recession now. You know, it may not reflect where people actually state that in the news and everything for another two to three months, but I think we are. So in, these type, in this type of environment, everyone's looking to make as much money as possible. Why? Because things cost a lot of money. Prices have gone up. We're in an inflationary environment. And uh, also interest rates have gone up. So anything that you buy, if you wanna buy a car, if you wanna buy a home, um, especially large purchases, it really can affect that. Um, not only the payments, but really what you can qualify. You know, so I think that this is a time for people to really consider what they're doing with their money and where, where they're putting their money to best use. So we're going to talk a little bit today about really earning 20000 a month, but I use that number. I could have used, I could have used a million different numbers, but I use that number because on average there's 20 days, 20 trading days in a month, you know, barring holidays and things like that. I trade the U.S. stock market, which is open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the market is open 9.30 to 4, but I usually only trade in the morning, beginning part of the day, in and out. That's the time of the day that I focus on, and I think it's very important to chunk it out. That's what I say. And what do I mean by that? I mean get in, get out, get in, get out, book the money, okay? When I first started trading, I didn't understand how important it was to book the money quickly. I just didn't understand that. And then I would end up trading all day long and then give back the money I made in the morning later in the day. That was a disaster for me. It was it was a tough, tough lesson for me to learn. And then I, I ended up just starting to change my life um, you know, program where I used to exercise in the morning and then trade. And then I switched and I said, no, I'm gonna trade. And then I'll leave the house and exercise at like 11 o'clock so I knew that I'd be leaving the house to exercise every day. Like I forced myself the discipline to leave because I wanted to trade all day. And I was just giving money back for the market or to the market. So trading really is about just getting in, getting that move and getting out and done. And people say, well, then how can you make more money? How can you ever make more money? How can you ever make more than that? Well, you get better, you grow your account and you risk more. It's just as simple as that. And you can do day trades and options. Now today we're gonna to talk specifically about day trades because we're gonna talk about margin and buying power and things like that. But either way, same philosophy, even if you're doing options, it's the idea where you have a set goal, okay? It is a dollar and cents goal, a financial goal. And if you want to make more, say you're achieving that goal, you're, you're making that goal, you're earning $20,000 a month, you want to make more, you want to earn more, well, then you can increase your risk, okay? Um, hold on one second. Let me just let this person in. So, again, it's the idea that you increase your risk, okay? So, if you have any questions, we're going along today. You can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200 GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype as well. And I think everybody knows my email or how to get in touch with me. Um, but, again, we're going to learn some stuff today. Some of it may be new for some of you here. Some of you I recognize, I've seen you before. Um, and I think, you know, learning is fun. It's fun for me to learn new things too. I don't think you ever get to the to an age 
uh, no matter how many years you've been on the planet Earth, that you that learning stops being fun. I don't know why people think learning or doing classes is a drag. It's not a drag, it's fun. I'm living in a new neighborhood now and I'm learning the ropes of the new neighborhood and, and I'm exploring, you know. Um, so learning is fun no matter what you do in life and it keeps you sharp, it keeps life interesting. We don't wanna be bored, boring is bad. So getting back to what I was saying, information, okay, is the key to your success. There's really no shortcut to making it. You know, everybody wants to just run out and make all this money all the, all at once, okay? But the reality is that sometimes it takes time. You got to learn it. But again, learning should be fun. It shouldn't be like, ugh, you know. It's a process. You go, you train, you learn it, you do it, you come back, you ask questions. And again, there really is no shortcut. So I participate in webinars where I go with a group. It's like a whole day thing, a whole week thing. I do them all the time when I get asked to do them. And then I sometimes hear the end of people's speeches like right before me. Um, and I hear people saying, you know, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. We're talking today about making a lot of money, but I'm not saying it's gonna happen like that, okay? You have to learn how to do it. Now, if you're fast on the draw and you're good at learning and you, you can risk the right amount of money to make this kind of money, yeah, you can do it quickly. But it shouldn't be your goal. You know, your goal should be to get good at it, to learn it and get good so you can have the consistency that you can have the longevity of doing this for a long time. Like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years, you know, and if I had anything to do over, if I could go back in time, I would have risked less money when I started trading than I did because I didn't think it was going to take me a long time. I figured I'm really smart. I could do it really, really quick. I figured I was going to teach myself how to trade in three to six months, six months at the most, at the longest. And I was wrong and I risked a lot of money very early on and then I cut my risk back until I figured out the system that of course I teach today. But I, I, I have a class and those of you that are familiar with my class, and I do once a month and I charge seven grand for that class. Now, you know, everybody is always like, well, I want to make the money back to the class. How long can I take it to do it? A day, a week, a trade, how long, a month? It's up to you. It depends how much you risk and that really shouldn't be your priority. Of course, everyone's so worried about that. Again, focus on the information, focus on the learning process of it, because if you get it, if you understand it, if you're doing it and you're doing well and you're following me, then the money will come. Whether it's fast or quick, according to what you think, it will come and you're on the right path. And that's what's really, really important. Because when you're on the path where you're losing all the time, that sucks, you know, and you don't know when you're gonna get off that path. And that's problematic. So let's talk about some goals here. So if your goal is to make 20 grand a month and there are approximately four weeks in a month, again, they're holidays and things like that, like the market's closed for Good Friday next week, okay? Then your weekly goal just on average is what? $5,000 a week. So I say, okay, fine. And I think it's good to look at it like that. So on average, you're looking to make what? $1,000 a day. Now, you may have a day where you don't trade, okay? But on average, I think it's good to look at it on a weekly basis. Now, with a one-to-one -one turnaround of your cash, if you're gonna risk $1,000, okay? $1,000 a day or $1,000 a trade, with a one-to-one, -one, you would need to risk a minimum of $1,000 to make $1,000, are you with me? Now, that does not mean 1,000 in buying power margin. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit here. It means you take the trade, you put in the stop. If the trade gets stopped out, boom, you lose a thousand, that's it. Now I do use stops. For those of you that have been in the live trading room, you understand, I call the entry, I call the stop, you put the stop in, it's a hard stop. I call it a hard stop, it's a limit order stop. I lose in trades if it stops me out, but it's better than having an unlimited risk, okay? Again, if you have any questions, plop them in the room. But, this is an average, say, oh, you're like, okay, if I short the stock at, you know, 99, and I'm just giving you the pennies, and you put a stop at 50, and we're talking about shorting here, say it's it's the same dollar range or whatever, so that'd be about 50, 50 cents, 51 cents, if you wanna be exact, okay? So if you get stopped out at 50, and you size yourself with a $1,000 risk, how many shares would you be able to take 
again, we're not going to talk about bar, buying power yen or margin yet, but how many shares would you need to take? 50 cents. Anybody know? And I'm just roughing it out at 50 cents, even though I said 99. Anybody know how to figure that out? If you're willing to risk $1,000, how many shares can you take with a 50 cent stop? Boom. Somebody, anybody. Vincent, you're, you signed up for the class already. You haven't done it yet. What do you think? How many shares? We're not, we're not talking about options. Shares. There, Don got it. 2,000. 2,000. So 50 cents times 2,000 shares. If we're talking about an equity trade, an equity trade here on margin, which we're going to talk about in a minute, you could, if you got stopped, you'd lose 1,000. If it went on to work, you're going to make money, which we'll talk about in a minute. So if it went, boom, and you risked 50 cents, and you were able to take 2,000 shares, guess what? If it drops, pretend you're shorting, which you know I like to short if you've ever heard me talk before. If it drops 50 cents, what are you going to be up? You're going to be up 1,000. Woo! And you can get out because that's your goal for the day. You made it. Bing, bam, boom. Okay? So really, all you need is one of those a day. It's not that difficult when you think about it. If you break it down and break it down and chunk it out. Now, how are you going to achieve these results? And you say, well, you make it sound so easy. It's the pick. It's finding the right pick that you're going to get that exactitude, that you're going to get that drop that you're gonna be able to take it, put the stop, but the stop's gonna hold, not ding you out, okay? And then go in your favor, which in this case, again, would be a short, so it would have to go down. So say you shorted something at, at, at 99, you'd want it to go to, and I'll just make up a number here, say it cost, the stock cost $20 and you shorted it at 20.99, you'd want it to go to what, 20.49 for 50 cents. Is everybody with me? And again, I'll bring up charts in a minute here, but I just want to explain this in, in, this, in this wording. Now, with a 50% turnaround, so I, don't, so you, so you, I don't even need one-to-one. -one. This market's tricky. It's choppy. It's in a range. Even today. Look at today. You're like, ah, oh, 50% 50, 50 is good. I'll take 50. I'll take a half. So you say, okay, fine. I still want to make 1,000. I'm still trying to make 1,000. I'm going to risk $2,000 a day, and I'm going to be happy with 1000 right now. This market's choppy. It's back and forth. One minute we drop, one minute we rally. I'll take half. So if you take 2,000 shares, or, or you know, you, you'd have more. Do you follow me? Uh, let me see if I can pull up a chart here. What did, let me see if I can pull up. Trying to think. I'm going to, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you an example of a chart in a minute, but I want to get through this. So if your goal is to make $1,000 a day, then what kind of move are you looking for in a chart? Well, we just talked about the 50 cents. So 50 cents move, you need 2,000 shares. A dollar move, you need 1,000 shares. So like today we did, we did Baidu. We actually had a great egg, exit in Baidu. Baidu reversed. We got out of Baidu early. We had a, almost a little bit of eggs and in Baidu, we did an equity trade in that and we got in and got out. So, you know, and I was happy, happy with a dollar in Baidu. Now in good times when the market is going crazy birds or a really, really good gap or you've got the market with you, whatever, Baidu might go $2, $3, $5 on a day, but not in this environment. So again, if you're honed in on your own personal goals that you know, you know, you can't stop trading when the market's chopping. You can't stop spending money in a recession. You know, you, you can't stop borrowing when interest rates go up. So you have to find a way to make things work and adjust in an environment, in any environment, as things go along. So having your goals and knowing what your goals are really, 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 really helps you because then you won't get so, I don't want to say piggy, but if you're like, well, I normally trade Baidu and I short Baidu and this is like, 
you know, I'd normally get $3 out of this, but this has only moved 50 cents today. No, it's money, it's cash. It's the idea of hitting win, wins. It's the idea of green, and again, like I said earlier, chunking it out, okay? So you can take any goal amount and figure out your dollar goal. Gotta figure out your dollar goal first. Could be less than 1,000 a day, could be more. And then you figure out the amount of shares you need in the stock and the move in the stock to look for that in the daily. Again, how do you get the exact point of getting that move to get the 50 cents, to get the dollar? You have to know what stock to look at. You gotta get the pick right. You gotta get the timing right. You gotta get the entry, okay? And this is all stuff I teach in the class, but I'm just going over some basics here today. Now, I'm gonna use this as an example here because we're gonna talk about margin because this was, this was, uh, J, this is JPM. We did this back March 9th, feels like a long time ago. I wouldn't say this is pricing, but it was over $100 a share, okay? And I did have a good amount of size in this, but I am gonna go over two examples, one for advanced trader and one for a beginner, just to show you the difference even of the cost of a position at something that's over a $100 price point, okay? And again, any questions, you go down to two, individual user, pick my name, Melissa Armo, and you type. So for those of you that don't know what I do, each day I'm trying to find the best thing to do. I told you we did Baidu today, we got in, got out, it worked. Your goal every day is to make money, that's it. It's trading is you get in, get out, you make money. This isn't long-term investing, you wanna do that, that's fine, that's not what day trading is. Day trading also, you needed a margin account to do that. So what I'm looking for mostly is short. Sometimes we go long, but I'm usually going to the short side first whenever I take a trade. Now, I also focus on gaps. Now, JPM had a gap. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this was a couple weeks ago when all the banking stuff was happening. The reason for the gap, we're not gonna go over here, but it did have a reason and it fell off a planet. Actually, I could have held this even longer. So this depicts what? Selling and shorts. So again, you say, oh, well, I, I you say, I just wanna make a dollar. Well, this went crazy, Burt's. Six dollars plus, might have even been seven dollar bar here. Really big bar in JPM. So you got way more than a dollar. If you wanted to hold it, you could have held it. But again, this would have made your goal for the day completely. Again, if you were looking for 50 cents or a dollar, I think $2 is a lot to look for even in stocks that would normally go like that in this market. But sometimes you can get them. Now this happened to go in our favor. It did go big. Again, you don't have to kill a trade if it's going. You do have to watch it because once you get to the point where you're up your goal for the day, you need to watch it to just take it out and book the money as soon as you can. Remember, it's never over to the fat lady. Seeing as you could be up on a trade, it can reverse against you. I mean, that's happened to me actually this year in 2023 because this market's been so, so jerky where I've been up money in trades and then lost in the trade. That's why, you know, I, I've adjusted here where I say, you know what, we're in a tricky market where it is in a range and this could last the entire year. I hope it doesn't. It's a lot more fun to take something every single day and get a two, three, four, five dollar move. But right now this market is trying to figure itself out and it hasn't done it yet, okay? Getting back to this trade, this is an advanced trader risk. Why? 4,000 shares is a big position size in this stock. Again, we're gonna go over margin in a minute. Cost is 135.35, risk was 3,000. Now this is a lot of money to risk per trade. Now what does this mean? If it had stopped, that's what you would have lost maybe a little bit more if it pushed through the stop. But you, you basically would have lost this. It would have filled you where you put it. This JPM has lots and lots and lots and lots of volume. Now I got out of this here, 131.70, it kept going. I think it broke 131, we can look at it later. Profit was 14,600. That's a huge trade. Something like this, is basically your goal for almost a week. Again, you don't have to kill a trade if it's going in your favor, but if in your mind you're like, okay, 135-ish, I'm looking for 134, you can watch it when it gets to 134. If it keeps going, you don't have to kill it, okay? But then you're like, okay, 134, 
Now it's 133, now it's 132. I mean, at some point, you have to exit the trade and get out. And that's what I did, even though this kept going. You have to get out of it at, at some point. Now, what if you had a smaller risk, 2,000 shares, $1,500 risk? Again, you put the stop in, it would have stopped you out. 7,300, that's a huge trade with a $1,500 risk. Again, the bar was big. The market was going with it. It fell a lot. You don't have to kill something if it's still going, but you do have to have daily goals where you're looking in your mind, you're like, okay, I just got in this. I'm looking for 134, 134, 134. And then it keeps going. You're like, okay, now 133, 133. And again, I'm calling the exits in the room, but you know what I mean. Now let's talk about margin or buying power here because I was mentioning this earlier for the point I was trying to make. So let's use JPM as an example. Again, this isn't a crazy expensive stock, but it's over $100 a share. So it's not cheap. Cost per share, $135.35 if you took it right there. Boom. So 1,000 shares would cost you in buying power, what? $135,350. And I'm just going to use this example here of 1,000 shares. If you took 500 shares, it would, you would need how much in buying power? $67,675. You're like, oh my gosh, I need $135,000 in an account to take this trade, even with 1,000 shares. Melissa, I don't have that much money to day trade. Guess what? Every single trader that trains, even professional traders, big traders, even hedge funds, you've seen that now, how, how that's been a problem for some, for some thug funds with what has happened in recent weeks. But you have a, an account, if you have a retail account, you will get a four to one margin. So you do not need the full cash equivalent. So for example, in this example here, you would need $33,837 and change to take on four to one margin, this position here with a thousand shares. Now a retail broker gives you four to one on a margin account, which means you can take a trade and get in, get out as much as you want. Again, do not get confused. This is not an option. Now, if you don't have 33,000, you could have bought for example, 10 contracts of the JPM put, which is the equivalent of 1,000 shares, which it would have been a lot cheaper as far as the cash you would have needed to take it. So I like doing both. Today we're talking about day trades, just so you can understand it for this specific lecture though. Now, if you wanna do 500 shares at a retail broker, this is again JPM at a cost of $135.35, $16,918.75. Now, the thing is though, at a retail broker, you have a minimum of $25,000 minimum to get a margin account to be in and out as much as you want. Now, there are other alternatives. There is something called a prop account. You can go to a proprietary day trading firm, they have different requirements and different rules. In that sense, you can get 10 to 1 margin. They usually require about 5,000 to open up an account. So your buying power would be what? 50,000 with a $5,000 account. That would not be SIPIC insured. Most retail brokers are SIPIC insured. SIPIC insured is not FDIC insured though. And again, if you don't know what, anything about this, you can Google it. Everybody should know everything about where your money is at this point. First of all, you should have always known that. Um, but if you never paid attention to those things before 2023, you need to now. So you need to read up on all those things, where you have cash and where you have money and where you have investments and understand the risk. Everybody with me? Hello, is anyone there? The FDIC is the 250,000. And again, one of the reasons the market fell, a million times it fell in the last few weeks, was when Yellen did not come out and explicitly say that they were going to basically guarantee all deposits at all banks. She did not say that. People thought she was gonna say that, and she didn't say that, and that is what they did for Silicon Valley Bank you know, but she didn't come out and change the rules with the FDIC. Okay, let me bring up the, hold on when I'm just, hold on here just one second. I want to bring up the charts here. 
Okay, can you see my charts? I moved it over, I took the PowerPoint off here because I want to show you what we did today. Can everybody see Baidu? So again, this is a this this was a day trade. It's over, but this was a day trade we did on on margin. I did not call an option in this. I'm glad I didn't because it didn't it didn't follow through here today. Okay, can everybody see this is Baidu? This is the one minute chart of Baidu. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, say you have a goal to yourself, it's $500 a day. We're talking about $20,000 a month. We could talk about $50,000 a month. It's, you know, again, you have to have the margin to take positions in, in higher price stocks like this. So you might, you might say, well, I can risk $3,000 a trade. I've got the cash, but I don't have the buying power to take that position right now, Melissa. Then okay, fine. Then you take what you can. You know, whenever I'm looking at expensive stocks, when I'm shorting the market, Market's pricey right now if I'm doing a margin trade in the SPY or the Qs or, or anything like that. I always say, well, what's the maximum amount I can take? You know, you need to know those types of things. It's important. Anyways, getting back to this, we had a nice trade in this. So here was the gap. Stock closed here the night before at 156.26. Boom. Open here in the morning at 152.75. Okay, today was uh, Monday, the 27th, 9.30 in the morning. So this did this here, then it rallied. Then I waited for the confirmation. We got in it, it's like around here. Got the drop, got the drop, boom. So you could have got out of it in this first drop, in and out. You could have held a little bit more, in and out. But that's it. So again, if you're, I'm just gonna, Make up a number here so it's easy in your head, even though we did this right around here. So 152.75, you're like, okay, 75 cents. That's good. That's all I want, that's all I want, 75 cents. Or you're like, okay, I wanna get a dollar. So I got a, I got a dollar out of this today. I was like, okay, 151.75, 151.75. Came down in here. It's close enough. Did it get the dollar? Yes, it did. Right in here. Snug as a bug. Look. Everybody see that? So again, okay, when you have goals, it's not impossible certainly not impossible, you know, to, of the idea of making those goals and achieving those goals realistically if you are very focused and honed in on the amount of money you're risking and the turnover you want in the position size that is your goal. Now, it has to coordinate with the stock. Now, I was using Baidu because we did it today. That's the Baidu today. It's like basically a nothing burger. We did the right thing getting in and out today, but the market was a nothing burger today too. Now, like I said earlier, in a normal move for Baidu, this bar from tip to tail is like eight bucks. I had no expectation of that today. And because of the choppiness of the market, I've you know, again, makeshifted what my expectations are for certain days when I know it's going to be choppy so we can still trade and still make money, you know, not, not holding to a piggy target. You just can't do that every day, and you cannot do that in this market. I know people are getting chopped up because they're doing that. These are, these are interesting times. But anyways, in a good Baidu gap, a fabulous Baidu gap, you would get something like this. Okay, so you say, okay, gotta make money today. I have goals, gotta, get, gotta meet my goals. How am I gonna make this work? 
So you, you become a little more nimbly. Now, let me think of something that's cheap. Give me a give me a stock that's cheap. Let's look at BAC. You have to know whatever stock you're looking for also if you can even get the move that you would want even to get. Like you can't take a stock and say, okay, I'm gonna get a dollar out of this if it can't even go a dollar. No, this isn't a good example. Yeah, somebody give me a cheap stock, if you can think of one. Oh, I know. Well, this is this is a bad example because it's a penny stock now, but I'll look at JCPenney. Uh, Macy's, I can look at that too. Oh, JCPenney, is this not trading anymore? JCPenney's gone. Well, I didn't even know that. That's how long it's been since I've traded JCPenney. Macy's. Macy's can still go a dollar, I think, but let's look. Macy's can still go a dollar. A-S-A-N. I'm trying, well, this can still go a dollar too. I was trying to think of something that was so cheap that couldn't even go a buck. Like something maybe that's like under $5 price point or $3 price point or maybe even $7, $7 price point. So something like that, you have to know like, okay, this stock can't even go a dollar on its biggest days. So then you adjust. You say, well, then I'm looking for 50 cents. Um, you know, then I'm looking for this amount and you adjust accordingly. Oh, there was one I looked at earlier today. Dish. Dish. I looked at this this morning and I knew this had basically no target. Now let me look here. Now this did go a dollar here, but for the most part, this is like crap. Like, you'd be like, oh my gosh, 50 cents would be like a good, good, fabulous move in this if you look at the bars, you know what I mean? Even though there's a few in here that are a dollar like if we had done this today which we didn't let's see what it did my gosh it was like 25 cents 30 cents barely look day before Friday again we didn't do a Friday but I'm just showing here tip to tail like 30 cents whatever so you also have to know the stock to know uh you know I'm not gonna get a dollar out of this um a k t s never heard of this I don't know what this is uh, this doesn't even look like it moves, but this moves like five cents. It looks like, wow, what is this thing? Um, okay, this moved 10 cents today. So again, I probably wouldn't even trade this, to be honest with you. This is like not even worth trading. UNG, like I'd fall asleep trading that basically. UNG, so this is, yeah, so this is like, ugh, it's like not even 30 cents. Now let's look at the big bar. Not a dollar. So like 50 cents in this UNG would be a huge move. You know what I mean? So you adjust, again, accordingly. You say, well, then why wouldn't you always do things that move big, Melissa? Because it may not be a good gap. So again, for those of you that don't know what I do, I'm looking at a stocks that gap. And then I rate the gap using my 26 point rating system to determine if I think it is high odds that it's gonna fall or rally if I wanna go long. And I'm looking then to short it if it's gapping down and rates well or go long it if it gaps up and rates well. But we usually do the short side, which is why I'm mostly short. So again, we're living in this type of environment. It's a good eBay here. This was a nice short we did a while back. We're living in type of environment where the market's been so choppy that you really do need to chunk it out if you're day trading and if you're swing trading you know you're probably really struggling because you're just not getting the follow through and again options you have to pick the right things too now you can scalp options if you want if you're worried about the chop you could chunk it out with options as well or you could be very very selective very very selective with options to do the momentum moves and you got to read the market right if you're doing that as well. You got to get the market direction right and the timing of it too. We did this eBay back here. 
that was, that was a long time ago, actually, 223. It's more than a month ago now. Any other questions about anything I said here? I was going to say something else, and I just forgot. Let me pull up the market. So, any other questions about anything I just was talking about? Buying power, margin, having goals. Anything anybody wants to answer or talk about before I talk about the mark in here? Any questions about the class? How do I decide between shorting and buying a put? Well, first of all, I'm always looking at doing the short. Unless it's so crazy, 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 crazy expensive. Like CMG or something where I'm probably not going to do a margin trade in it. Like, it's just better to do an option in it. Years ago, you know, I was doing, I wasn't really doing margin trades all the time in Google and Amazon, and then the stock split. We were doing puts or calls in those. We were doing options, but the stock split, and now they're very easy to day trade. So it depends on the price. Now, why might I not do an option in something? Because I, Because, first of all, it may not even have an option in it. Second of all, because not everything does, second of all, I may not have any volume in the options stream, and then I don't want to do it either, okay? Or third, like the Baidu today, I don't think Baidu is going to have any follow-through to the downside. So I'm not going to do a call on Baidu. We shorted it. I shorted the day trade in and out. I did no new options today. Baidu, I didn't think would follow through, at least not in the next week. Therefore, I'm not going to do an option in Baidu. Could you theoretically have made money in Baidu doing an option, doing a put today, buying and getting out quickly? Yes, but you really would have had to scalp it. And I'm sure there's people in the room, in fact, I know there's people in the room that are doing that. I tend to trade options, though, with momentum where I'm trying to get a move, a bigger move than Baidu would have had today. Because remember, it's not penny for penny as far as the option cost and the move in the option versus the day trade because of something called you know, time value. Actually, let's just, let me just go back to the Baidu here before we talk about this to show you what I mean. Like, say you did the Baidu today, and I didn't even look up what this cost. But uh, we, got a, we got basically the dollar I wanted out of this. You would have got in, got out. So say you shorted it at 152.80, and you got out at 151.80. Bing, bam, boom, you're done. You're done in 10 minutes, you're done by 10 o'clock, you're done. In fact, Vincent, I think you tried to sign in the room. We were already done. Now, what if you bought a put, a put in Baidu, which I did not call. I don't know what it would have cost. Well, let's just make it up. Say it would have cost two bucks or something. Say you would have done a put that expired Friday, today's Monday. Wouldn't it have done any longer than that. If you wanted to get out of it here and you paid $2, and I'm just making this up, understand, knowing options as many years as I've been doing them, it might have been up like $2.15. I don't know, maybe 220 or something. So like I'm usually not do, risking $2 and making 20 cents in a put that expires in a week. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's one thing if I'm still in it, it's the last day and I'm up 20 cents, I'll get out. I'm not gonna let it go to nothing. But like I'm not, like when I do an option, I'm like boom and I take it like to just get out in five minutes for 20 cents, I'm not doing that. But there are people that are in the room that I'm sure are doing that because they don't have margin accounts. And yes, that is something that you can do. So you may want to do that, Vincent. You may want to do that. When I call the trade in the room, because I know you're going to do the options. Now you're also on the newsletter, but I'm not doing that. Do you follow the difference? So you have to find what works for you. Because some people do want to trade uh, their retirement accounts and they can't get a margin account. You can't, you can't trade your retirement account a margin. I hope that answers that. Do you usually only do one trade per day? Yes. If I do multiple trades, I'm probably having a crappy day. Now, say I take a trade and I get stopped in the trade. Like if I got stopped in Baidu, I'm not even sure what else I would have done today. Because today there was, like I might have looked for something else to do. We might have done meta. Let's look at what that did. I was looking at that. But if I had gotten stopped in Baidu, the first trade, then I would have looked to do a second trade. 
Yeah, this fell. So I brought... This wasn't easy. This wasn't easy, though, look. Look. That's crappy this in the morning, look. Anyways, if I take a trade and I make money, I'm done. If I take a trade and I get stopped, talk about the day trades, then I would look to take a second trade to cover the loss for the first trade and make money. And what if I can't find a second trade? Well, then I'm probably losing that day with one loss. But again, that shouldn't kill anybody, one loss, which is why you have to determine your risk. You should never risk your whole account. But you also have to put a stop in. Now, what if I take a trade in Baidu and I get stopped and I'm like, oh my gosh, this stopped me because Yellen started talking and the market flipped, but I still love the Baidu. I'm going to stay on the Baidu. Then I might do a second trade in the same stock because I love the gap and it flipped me out or stopped me out because it has nothing to do with anything at all that had to do with the gap or Baidu. I, I do that too. Again, I teach retakes when to do them, how to do them in the, in the Golden Gap class. But I might do that. So I might not find another stock pick. I might go back into that same pick, wait, and then do it later. Looks like you came halfway to being stopped out in the Baidu trade. Uh, no, we never got, we never were stopped in the Baidu. We never were even close to stopped in the Baidu. Here. We got in here and we got out. We were never close to being stopped. If you held it all day, you got stopped, but that's the whole, that, this is the point of what I'm trying to communicate here. I don't trade all day. Actually, we, would, we wouldn't have gotten stopped. I'm looking at this. We would not, well, no, I, you know, well, I did tell people, I told people to put the stop at break even if they didn't want to get out where I did. So they would have got stopped at break even, but they wouldn't have lost. But it doesn't matter. I don't trade till 4 o'clock anyways. If I'm trading till 4 o'clock, I'm having a bad day. But no, Baidu didn't stop. But after I got out of that, because it could have kept going. It could have gone to 150. I said, if you want to put the stop at break even, you can. And if people did that, then they didn't make any money. But they didn't lose any money. Not everybody reports to me in the room what they do. But in this mar market, I mean, I most people are getting out quick with me. I mean, that's... That's the point of being in the room. I'm very, very good with fast trades. My brain works very quickly, and I also talk very quickly. I just talk fast. It's something that I've done for my entire life. I talk and think fast, so you got to keep up with me. But that is the point of being in the room and having to have you having to do the class before joining the room, which is a requirement. So everybody that's in the room has done my class. They understand the entries. They understand the women at chart. They understand the setups. You know, because if it, with me for a while and they've done the course. But no, Baidu, I did not do an option. Baidu did not stop in the day train. And why wouldn't you be out is the whole point. Again, no piggy targets. Baidu was a fine trade. It was a short. This was not the greatest gap on the planet. You know, like, I'm not surprised that this just sidelined all day, actually. And the market was crap today. No directional bias for the market today at all. Gapped up, fell. It depended on what indice you looked at. The Qs, the SPY, at what time of the day, the diamonds. I mean, it was, again, this is the environment we're in. Again, I, I did some kind of webinar. I don't remember if it was last week or the week before. No, I think it was last week. Yeah, I think it was last week. I did some kind of webinar. And the person before me said that they're getting the market right every day. I'm like, no, they're not. Nobody is. And I'm really good at what I do. And I'm not getting the market right every day. So just, you know, you go in with the expectation every day that you need to be as sharp as a tack. And if you're not, then you may want to take a break from trading. Or you got to follow somebody that is super duper focused. In fact, the last couple of days I said no talking until we're out of trades. Because that is how fast things have been flipping around. And it doesn't matter if you're going long or short. Now, going back to the market, some people, and this is not what I do because this is 0% conviction for me and it's just a dumbass thing to do because you're never going to make any real money getting into a habit of doing this. Some people are trading the range, day trades or options, they're going long and then they're shorting the resistance. They're buying the dip and they're buying the support and they're buying the dip and then they're getting out, they're showing their resistance. So they are basically going, let me just blow this up. 
They're basically going long and short, the same stuff. I'm just gonna use this buy here because the market's a good example of this sideways range. That's a ridiculous thing to do. You have no conviction if you're buying and shorting the same thing at the same time, the same day, the same week. And also, what range? The range has changed. You could say, well, the range is all the way up here. Really? When was the last time we were there? August. You could say, well, the range now is here. Really? Okay, so you're going to short this. What if it goes all the way back up here? I mean, it's just, you're going to lose doing that. Don't do that. And I know people are doing that. And it's, that's deadly too. You'll lose, a, you know, a more than half the trades and something like that. So you're better off fine-tuning right now what, what to, to do, fine-tuning your entries, fine-tuning your exits, chunking it out, fine-tuning the picks, fine-tuning the direction, and not doing anything where you need the market, actually. Because if you need the market right now, the market is not doing anything right now to give you any conviction at all, like for today, tomorrow, Friday, you know. I have my thoughts and take on the market, but I don't even want to talk about that here because there's just like, we're not looking at that right now. This market is in a sideways range. There's a lack of conviction and we need to find specific, specific picks to trade. Let's look at how the queue is closed here. Um, any other questions? I was gonna say something else and I forget. Look at this, look at that. So again, we gapped up today and failed. Who knows where we'll be tomorrow. But you know, there's between now and Easter, you know, earnings season starts after the holiday, but between now and Easter, the next two weeks, there's no real big data out that's gonna dramatically change the market. The Fed raised rates a quarter point, they said what they said. Will another bank go under? Everyone's hoping that doesn't happen, but the market's worried. Banks are up, banks are down. You know, and something could happen with Ukraine, Russia. There's all kinds of things going on. Or nothing might happen. And we may just go nowhere for the next two weeks until after the holiday. And then it's earnings season. And then we get big moves in stocks that report earnings. But that'll be a very profitable time to trade. But until then, I have to make money. We have to still trade. We have to still do stuff if there's a good gap. But again, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. When you're looking for that, holding it down, that's where the points come in. That's where the, ra the rating system comes in. That's where the... The diligence comes in on my part to do the homework in the morning to prepare. And that's what you learn when you do the class. That's what you're going to learn, Vincent. Vincent's already signed up for the class. No, I'm not interested in trading futures. Why? There's just no benefit to, do the, to that, Don. I trade the stock market. I trade the SPY. I trade the Qs. I do options in the market, and I do day trades. What would be the benefit of doing futures? The only reason people like to do futures is you don't need as much money. So that's... Not a concern for me. There's no benefit to doing futures. You can open up an account with a smaller amount of money, and I don't see any benefit in that. You can open up an options account, a cash account with $2,000. That's a small amount of money, and anything less than that, nobody should be trading, in my opinion. So do options. Uh, there was something else I was going to say. We're getting a storm here in New York. The sky's the sky looks really neat right now. Um, what else? So you never know. You never know what the future holds. So if you're up a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars in five minutes, ten minutes, eight minutes, get out. Then you know you made the money, you booked the money, you're done for the day. No one knows what the future holds. Did anyone ever think COVID would hit? No. And I even knew about COVID in China at that time in early 2020. And did I think that it would close down the entire United States of America? No. I knew Chinese Americans. I knew about COVID in China. I never thought the whole country would close down. And I never thought they closed down New York City. And I never thought that, that, that you wouldn't be able to get food. I mean, who could have predicted the things that have happened then? Who can predict we'd be in a recession now? Well, you could go back to last year and say, yeah, we we're probably could be in a recession if something doesn't change. Things are not changing. Therefore, now it's easy to predict that. But could it last longer than we think or shorter than we think? Well, again, we don't know. You don't know. So we could be in a recession. 
for two years until the next presidential election and the administration changes, if it does change or someone else comes into power in the same party and makes different decisions. We, you know, the Fed chair and Yellen are making decisions and a lot of people think that that has hurt the economy and the market. But we're living in times right now where the only person that's gonna think about your future and your well-being is you. So you prepare for the worst and hope for the best kind of attitude and then you'll be fine. And then you'll be fine. Something else I was gonna say. That's a good apple. But to just sit back and not trade and say you're gonna wait for the market to break out of the range, by then it's too late. And it could be six months from now or one year from now or two years, worst case scenario, you know. And why why wait? There's opportunity in the market every day. If you can take a hundred shares of Baidu and make a hundred dollars a day. That's $500 a week. That's $2,000 a month. Anybody would take that. If someone stuck an envelope with $2,000 a month under my door, every single month, I'd take it. I'd take it. I'd pay for my groceries. So, you know, the, the, the lecture was about making a certain amount of money, but it's different for everybody because everybody's account size is different and you have to make it work for you. So if it's your IRA, then you're focusing on buying puts and buying calls and then selling them. If it's you wanna do margin trades and you gotta open up a margin account, you gotta go prop if you have under 25,000 or you go retail, you have over 25,000. Let's see if this did today. You make it work for you, but you have to set your goals. You have to work hard to achieve those goals. I mean, you just can't be lazy about it in this market. Any other questions from anyone here? Good questions today. We lost a couple of people that didn't come back. I, I saw somebody's comment about they like this room better. I, it's neither here nor there for me, but I don't know. Some people still, I think, have trouble with it. They're used to the other platform. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Um, Vincent, you did have a question for me. I skimmed your email. I'll respond to you later. Vincent signed up for the class in April. If you get trades, Vincent, if you get options, newsletter trades, and you see them like a day late or four days late, no, I wouldn't be doing them. Now, whether the trade has already gone or not, I wouldn't even worry about it. You miss, you miss the, you, you're like, you didn't do it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So don't be like, oh, I had off on Friday. It's Monday. Should I do them? No. In general, I would just, boom, you were off on Friday. Wait for the next one. I think that's a rule of thumb, whether the trade went or not, which some of them didn't go yet. So theoretically, yeah, you could still do them today, but I wouldn't. I would just get in a habit get the train, do the trade when you get it, let it play out. John, you've been following me for so long. I hope you do the class this year. Jesse, you look new. I don't think I've ever talked to you before. Don, I know you're working on trying to do the class too. Carl, you look new. Cecil, I've talked to you so many times. What's up with you, Cecil? Terry O, you've been following me since the beginning of time. Todd, I don't recognize your name. You look new. Tom looks new. Any other questions from new people, old people? Anybody at all? Uh, well, there's a couple, there's a couple earnings in the next two weeks, but it's not like Earnings season officially starts, I think, with the, it's the banks. It's after Easter. Remember, it's tax day is the 17th now. So actually, it might, yeah, it's after the week after Easter. So between Easter and then the tax deadline is that one week, and that's when earnings season starts. But there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks that will report earnings, and there's a lot of gaps. So it's, it's a busy time for me. I have to rate a lot of things in the morning. Now there's not that many things to rate, but I still try to find something. When do I send the options emails out? Most of the time in the morning in the pre-market. Like if I had wanted to do Baidu, it would have gone out before 9 a.m. Definitely before the open. So you don't do it till you get it. 
So you can't do the Baidu if I had done it until the open. Now, if I happen to call a trade later in the day, it's because I'm sitting here, I see something that's happening in the market, and let me go back to the market. And I say, oh my gosh, we need to get this and we need to do this and then I'll do it. So we did some trades last week late, like they were really late, like 3.30 I sent trades when we had a big sell off and I, and I knew that we were going to then fall the next day. So, you know, that's really rare that I would call a trade after three o'clock. Now, if I happen to call a trade after three o'clock, again, this was the sell-off last week. Boom, boom, boom. But if I happen to call a trade after three, that's not a trade that you're probably gonna get out of. Like if I call a trade at 3.30, unless it goes like gangbusters, you're not gonna get out of it by four. It might. I mean, there's, I shouldn't say never, because I mean, there's times when I've done trades and I've gotten out of them that quick where they've sold off or something to the close. So I'm not gonna say never. But most of the time, after three, if I call a trade, I think it's going to gap down if I call it put or gap up if I call it a call the next morning. So you'd wanna take it and hold it. But if it has a big move before four, you can get out. I mean, sometimes that happens, but it's usually if I call it late in the day, I think we're gonna be down the next morning or up the next morning if it's a call. But 95% of the trades are in the morning before the open, which is good. Gives you time to prepare, get yourself situated, figure out what you wanna do. Any other questions? So again, it's important to understand what to do it's important to take profits. It's important to set goals. You're not going to achieve goals if you don't have the goals set. And you need to be very specific with those goals, whether it's $500 a day, $1,000 a day, or whatever. Whether it's one trade a day or 10 trades a day, whatever it is. Whether it's day trading on margin, whether it's doing options, whatever you want to do. Being specific is important and helps you. Listen, have a great night, everyone. I will see some of you tomorrow. You're welcome.